Back at the studio, 2 Chains and pop star Paloma Ford are kicking it with Master G, the original rap MC. The first time anyone heard rap on a record, it was his voice, and people lost their bloody minds. Talk about a showstopper. They're joined by National Hip Hop Museum curator Jeremy Beaver to check out some priceless pieces of rap history. Yeah, it's a pleasure. All to meet right, you. Yeah. Two Chain, my friend. Hello. Hello. Okay, Hello. 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 nice to meet, meet you. you. Okay, well let's get it started. And you know I'm the first originally commercially successful rapper don't, in. Don't know. play with you. Oh, okay. I'm just saying. I'm don't, just don't, saying. Don't, tell don't, him first. I mean, and you know I'm the. Don't. Uh, <laughs> okay, don't okay. play. Tell so, this camera. <laughs> Let's let him know. Yeah, commercially first successful hip hop artist in the world. Yeah, cool. Yeah. It started right here. Sugar Hill Gang, Rappers Delight, right here. Master G. Wow. Actually, that's a great segue. Yes. Can I show you yes. something Come about on, the Sugar man. Hill Gang? So we're gonna show oh, you man. some stuff. Okay. All right. I'm 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 ready. Okay. Well, you got to put gloves you gotta, on. That's what I say. He's got his curated gloves. Oh my God. One of the so interesting two things, things I know that. when it's a, when it's cap. If they put gold on it, it's some cap. And if they put gloves on it to it's, handle it, it's some cap. It's real. So we have the largest collection of hip hop artifacts and memorabilia in the world. Oh no, there ain't no cap, man, okay. So we're the world's first hip hop museum. We're located in Washington, D.C. The world's first hip hop museum doesn't just preserve and collect. We also need to educate. So I think Master G might be the first one to tell you so, what an 8-track is. Back in the day, okay, it was like a box. And you put this in the box. And this is how the music was played. So this is at my first album. This is literally my first. That's me right there. Wow. That's him. Let me see. Me right there. Wow. That's him. That's me. Wow. Let me see. That's yeah. Me. That's me. That's him. That's yeah. 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 So that's literally the first Sugar Hill before Gang Before cassette tapes. This is before cassette tapes. Before cassette tapes. Yes. Yeah, you don't even know nothing about that. And then, this so... This is crazy. This is another one. This is our greatest hits album, but it's the same idea. And that's and you the kept, And you are, yeah. are a I hoarder. told you. You are a, the I'm original... You. I'm the original hoarder. The original hoarder, <laughs> brother. Is this, bef this before vinyls? No, so it's right around the so it was vinyl, eight track. It, that was all during that time. Okay. Yeah. Then this looks like a video game. It, 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 Boy, it does look like a video game. It's similar like okay. to but, it's the, same, but yeah. it's the same idea. But it played music. There were only four hip hop releases ever released on eight track. Those are two of the four. Right. Two of the four. So time out. Slow down, slow down. Let me think. Is this what lead people to make museums having this type of historic stuff? Yes. Put okay. Yes. This is the reason why. This is like this preservation is... of, of the culture. Okay. Yeah. Because you, in order to know how to get where you got to go, you got to understand where you came from. This right here is the beginning of our music, literally. How could you possibly sell? Check this out. Check the this boxing out. glove from LL Cool J's "Mama Said Knock You Out" music video. Now, we definitely aware of this. For real? Yeah, yeah, man. Is this the one he was wearing or something? That's what is this? One this is video. one, one from, from the, the videos. videos. Yeah. yeah. And, and how did y'all get this piece of history now? Because see, you didn't, this is not your song. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> We're done with you. <laughs> You're so shy, you know? Because yeah, yeah, I'm really, yeah, I really don't want to get it out there, but yeah. You know, um... Well, I can, I can tell you something. I'll show you something that most people wouldn't notice on this. Uh, what most people would notice is, if you flip it over, actually been authenticated. And this is what's called the JSA authentication. And what this means is that this article, this artifact has provenance. It has been authenticated to be the actual article and therefore an appraisal company is willing to stake their name on it. That look like a sticker to me, man. Not gonna lie, it does look like a sticker. Uh -huh. And so, because this is the only one known to mankind, um, it has been appraised for seventy-five to ninety-five thousand dollars. Jeez. So uh, maybe you've heard of a record label called Death Row. Perhaps. This is a one-of-one one Jeff Hamilton handmade leather jacket for Suge Knight in honor. Of doggy style, that's Snoop Dogg. That's hard. Ooh. That's hard. 
That's Jeff Hamilton, one of the greatest leather makers. He is the best at making these jackets, absolutely. Shout out to Jeff Hamilton. This is an original Suge jacket, bro. Mm -hmm. Wow. Man, the detail so crazy. Crazy. That is crazy. So yeah. hard. I'm from Long Beach, so I'm oh, going to speak go. on behalf there of. On behalf of Long Beach. On behalf yeah. of Long Beach. We endorse this amazing, right? Fully. But the significance of this jacket represents their relationship. And there's no more iconic artifact than this jacket to represent that kind of tumultuous relationship. Yeah. And there is no price tag for it. But it has been appraised between $200,000 and $250,000. Serious business, right? I want that bad. <laughs> <laughs> By the late 80s, many people around the country and the world considered this next artist one of the greatest, if not the greatest, MC of all time. In fact, they even gave him the title, The God MC. And that's, of course, Rakim. The one and only Rakim. Rakim. And this is Dapper Dan. That's Gucci. Yes. Jazz. yes. You knew it. You knew hey. it. You knew it. Dapper Dan made that. He made that. Yes. And he made that before his deal with Gucci. Yes. And Rakim is like, man, he's like people's favorite rapper. Absolutely. Rap. He's one of my favorites. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's one of my favorites. Yeah, he's definitely the rapper's rapper. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's so, definitely the rapper's is, rapper. Did he wear that in any video or something like that? Oh, yeah. So this is the paid in full jacket. Oh, and if you go on YouTube. That's the paid in full jacket. So the Rakim jacket is one of one. These are American history. And so you're looking at about one hundred and twenty-five to $150,000. But so wait, there's right. more. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's some story. First of all, do it has you I mean ever heard compared any type of DNA test weird Al Yankovic ever. Al Yankovic, you ever Al been compared to Al Yankovic? I haven't. We want to do something a little special because we have some gifts for you. We have gifts. This is, this is something that we do to honor the most important hip hop legends that this country has ever turned out. Which you are one of them. By the power vested in me by the world's first hip hop museum, the National Hip Hop Museum, I honor you two chains with the award of induction. There you go. Uh, this is so cool, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank man. Thank you, man. Y'all really? Well yeah, deserved. Man. Yes, yes, and you deserve it, brother. I'm the executive director. Come on now. The significance, man, the impact, what you've done for the culture. That's hard. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. It's more important to be recognized by your peers than it is by a bunch of old white guys that don't know anything about hip hop. <laughs> oh, that sounds like a shot was fired, but let's go. All right. So we have to carry this yes. one in a specialized bulletproof briefcase because the insurance policy requires that it be protected at all times. The cherry on top. Yes. Very significant. The actual demo tape. Yeah, you need to get in on this one. From Fear of a Black Planet, Public Enemy. Public Enemy from Green Street Recording Studio, where the album was actually recorded. That is a pre-album demo of the full length. Yes. That cassette tape may not function, I'm sure, in the next five, 10 years. So the only way to allow it to live on is to digitize the audio. Digitalizing it. Digitize. Digitize, I said, di what did I say? Digitalize. Yeah, so. I probably fucked that word up. I feel but, like, are I those the like same word? Digitize or digitalize? Y'all look it up at home because see, guess what? Are we hiring? Are we hiring? Are we hiring? <laughs> I'm definitely hot, but listen, y'all at home, y'all ain't, ain't doing nothing. I'm working, so look it up. 